up on your feet as we usher in the presence of God on this chilly morning, but we're grateful because we're still here. insistence but at your invitation we come into this place because we know it is here that we are re-reminded of just how great you are and how good you continue to be to each and every one of us so we gather to worship we gather to offer our praises to you we gather to offer our very selves to you as an act of gratitude and so we pray God that as we open up ourselves to you this day, that you would weave our individual spirits into a spiritual symphony, that the melodies might return back to us in the form of divine miracles, and that the harmonies might remind us of your holiness that continues to breathe among us and even breathes within us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon us, your people, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Good morning, Saints. I want to welcome you this morning to worship here at St. John's Metropolitan Community Church right here in the heart of Raleigh, North Carolina. We are blessed and excited that you have taken time out on this Lord's Day as we gather once again to worship our God in spirit and in truth. 
if you are visiting with us for the first time today, we certainly want to extend to you a very personal welcome and greeting and invite you, if you not have an opportunity to do so already, to pick up a copy of our welcome and information guide. It gives you further information about who we are here in this community of faith and how we believe God is continuing to groom and grow us as we seek to live out our call of proclaiming Christ, building community, and transforming lives. I also hope that you found in your bulletin or you will pick up a copy of our welcome card, which is what we use to maintain the statistical data on our members, regular attenders, and first-time guests. And so we invite you as you feel comfortable to complete the information on the front of the card. If there are prayer requests or messages you'd like to get to us today or this week, you can note that on the back of the card. If you are a member or a regular attender, we ask that you place the card in the offering basket during the offertory portion of worship. However, if you're with us for the first time, we want to invite and encourage you to hold on to the card. And if you would meet with Pastor Carlton and Deacon Vance Haywood out in the parlor area after services today, we have a gift for you to let you know how blessed we are. God led you to be with us in worship today in this community of faith. If you're here for the first time, folk will tell you we never believe it's by accident, but we believe it is as a result of an appointment, and we call those God's divine appointments with you. And so our prayer today is your heart might be open to everything God has for you, and in turn, your heart and our hearts might be blessed. We welcome you to worship at St. John's and invite you for a time of hospitality, coffee, coffee and donuts on the call area after services today for a time of fellowship and story sharing with one another. The Sunday News highlights events and activities coming up in our community of faith, as well as some future events that are right around the corner. Um, most folk and individuals, communities around the globe on Thursday paused to remember the lives of our transgender brothers and sisters whose lives were tragically taken um, due to random acts of violence. And most communities of faith, including Christian churches today around the world, are commemorating Transgender Day of, Day of Remembrance, and we are doing that here as well. You will note in your bulletin there is an insert that actually gives you some information about TDOR, its significance, and why we continue to take time out on the 20th and why this day is specifically important. And right before we go into prayer time today, we'll be actually doing a specific litany um, in memory and in honor of our trans brothers and sisters. So we invite you to peruse that information that is there. You should also find in your bulletin an insert that is talking about the Affordable Care Act. This is being supplied by the North Carolina Council of Churches. If you or someone you know is eligible or is in need of health care coverage, and this will provide you with most of the information that you need to know, there's also a contact number for the North Carolina Council of Churches. If you need further information, do know that the open enrollment for the Affordable Care Act concludes on February 15th of next year, so do not procrastinate or delay if you can benefit from these services. After this service today, as well as after the 11 o'clock service next week, there will be an information session offered to everyone in our community of faith, and St. John's positions or repositions herself to reinvent herself for the future. We're doing rebranding information sessions that's going to tell you about this process, what we hopefully will look like and what some of the goals are. And we want you to be an integral part of the process. And so we want to invite you to stay back after services today. We won't hold you long. We just want to get you in the pipeline and get you thinking about what we will look like futuristically speaking. So either this this afternoon, after this service, or next Sunday, either one, we look forward to seeing you at the info sessions. Because of the Thanksgiving holiday, there will be no Tuesday night Bible study this week, and do note that the church office will be closed on Thursday because of the Thanksgiving holiday. This coming Saturday at 10 o'clock a.m., we'll be switching seasons. Again, we'll be getting ready for the season of Advent Christmas, and so we'll be setting aside Saturday as a time for hanging up the greens and decorating our facility. So if you have the spiritual gift of decorating, amen. And if you have that, like that creative uh, gene in your system, I invite you to meet Vance here, Vance and Timothy, on Saturday as they enter that process. I know everything's going to look beautiful in time for Advent 1 on next Sunday, so we invite you to be a part of that. The last announcement that I have actually is about a week from tomorrow, December 1st, is World AIDS Day around the world. And as we have done for the last few years, we will be... Uh, participating with Millbrook Baptist Church at their Labyrinth Walk, as well as the reading of the names. That will be at 5 o'clock p.m. for one hour, 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock on Monday, December the 1st. Um, we are still looking for readers, and so if you would like to be a part of the reading project of the names, then you can see me after services, and I can make sure that that information is forwarded on. Monday week, 5 o'clock, Millbrook Baptist Church. If you're not familiar with where it is, see me or see Pastor Carlton, and we can get you directions. I hope and I pray that's it. 
for the announcements for this day. And so as we continue in worship, I want to invite you now, respecting the boundaries of those around you, to greet one another with the love, peace, and joy of Jesus Christ.
somebody prayed for you. Send it on down, send it 
time you need for the Holy Spirit to rain down on your life. Things that you're going through that you think no one understands. But God is there. He's right beside you. All you got to do is ask him. It may not come when you want it, but he is always on time. Always on time. No matter what. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. We need the Holy Spirit to rain down on this community of faith. Believe and trust that God is there.
gates of heaven let it rain let it rain yes open open the flood gates of heaven let it to our God in prayer. Today we certainly want to lift up ongoing prayer requests as we do in our community of faith each week. For those who are grieving the love of lost ones, the loss of loved ones in their lives, certainly want to lift up Pastor Carlton and whose friend James over in Seattle. His mother passed away this past Thursday. So we want to lift up James and his entire family as they prepare to finalize her. We certainly pray for Pastor Carlton. It's difficult to be on opposite coasts. Yes. And you know you want to be in another place. And so we lift them up in our prayers. We lift up those who are in need of healing, emotional, physical, spiritual. Yes. Especially for our sister Laura Hillerin, who's experiencing some trouble with her arm. And so she went home after the early service today. And so we pray for her recovery. Those who are living with chronic and terminal illnesses, including Rusty's mom, who's elected to no longer do chemotherapy treatment, and for all caretakers of those who are living with various illnesses, for those in recovery and those seeking yes, pathway to recovery, you, mm. and for the lives that continue to be saved because of the light that people are starting to find again, for the ongoing conflicts around the world, particularly in the Middle East, for the brutal crimes that continue to happen in the name of politics and in some cases religion. We lift up the town of Ferguson, Missouri. Yes. As they prepare for what will be a decision that will change the face not only of that town but this country possibly. Yes. But we pray that we might be mindful that the God that we serve and the Christ that we follow believed in peace. Peace at all costs. Pray that peace might be the order of the day, even after the decision is rendered. We pray for all of those who are impacted by the snows in the north, particularly those in Buffalo. Yes, thank you, those who are trying to recover from all of that. We pray for the church. That she might continue to understand the nature of her call, the huge trust that's been placed in our care to be lighthouses for those who are seeking a more excellent way yes. to be and to come, to live and to love. We join with communities of faith, spiritual houses of worship around the world as we honor the lives of those whose lives were tragically taken away because of who they were yes. as trans-identified men and women. I hold in my hand a list of 91 individuals oh my God. who were murdered this year alone oh my God. in the United States. <clears throat> Most of them too brutal to describe. This doesn't include the 238 others yes. who were murdered in Europe My God. in 2014 alone. Jesus, and so we pray for those who have been left behind. Yes. We honor the memories of those who lost their lives and for the integrity with which they lived. And we pray that the day will come where every human being will be treated as the sacred gift that they are that life will be valued to its fullest extent. So as we prepare to go to God in prayer, there is a litany that is inserted in your bulletin. And as the backdrop to our prayer, we'll begin 
our prayer time with this litany. I would invite you to join with me. We praise you, Holy One, for the gift of life. Precious, stubborn, fragile, and beautiful. We're grateful for the time we have to live upon the earth, to love, to grow, to be, and to become. We give thanks for the will to live and for our capacity to live fully all the days we are given. For those who have been taken by the devastation of violence used against them, we remember them and recommit ourselves to embrace the opportunity to build lives of wholeness in their honor. We give you thanks for the partners, friends, allies, and families who have been steadfast in their love, for the people who have devoted their lives' work to the prevention of violence, offering support and making the transition from one gender to another possible with passion and commitment. For the persistent and diligent science, brilliant ideas and insights that have led to new life-giving procedures for those in leadership who have acted to provide adequate and affordable health care for people who are in transition. We give thanks for those whose blessings, prejudices, and judgment have yielded to understanding, for those who have overcome fear, indifference, or burnout to embrace a life of gentle, caring, and compassion. We praise you, Eternal One, for those who have loved enough that their hearts have broken, who cherish the memories of those we have lost, and for those who console the grieving. God, grant us the love, courage, tenacity, and will to continue to make a difference in the world, even with the violence aimed toward us and our community. Inspire us to challenge and stand strong against the forces that allow this needless harm and violence to continue, prejudice, unjust laws, repression, stigma, and fear. Into your care, we trust and lift up the hundreds of souls who have been tortured and murdered. We lift up to you our dreams of a world where all are cared for. Our dreams of wholeness. Our dreams of a world where all are accepted and respected. A dream we know we share. God of compassion and grace, in your mercy. God, hear our prayer. Amen. Please join with us in our comfort. Gracious and loving God, we want to take time to give you thanks this morning, to thank you for waking us up, to thank you for bringing us here, to thank you for meeting us at each step of the way. God, we know when we made it here today that we had a divine appointment with you. We know, God, that you had a purpose for us to be here today. And we know, God, 
that you have been with us each and every step of the way, giving us all that we need. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you for the many blessings you pour out on us each and every day. And we thank you for the many comforts and the things that you provide us that we don't need. God, and as we come together this morning, we want to lift up so many things in prayer. All the things going on around our nation, particularly what's going on in Ferguson, God, we ask that you would be with them. Be with the jury as they deliberate and as they have to make a decision. And we ask God that they would be prayerful as they make that decision. And the decision that's made will be one that you're satisfied with. And we pray, God, that you'll be with the community there and everyone else in the nation and around the world that's going to be impacted by that decision one way or the other. Regardless of what side of the issue you stand on, God, no matter how you look at it, Ferguson reminds us of one thing, that racism still persists, that prejudice is still prevalent in our society. And as long as we have a Ferguson that is happening, as long as we have to hold a transgender remembrance day, then your love and your grace and your mercy is not being reached throughout the world. Your love, your grace, and your mercy is not known to everyone. There are many who are suffering, many who need to know that, God. And our prayer is right now that it will reach them and that we can change and let that change begin in our hearts and in our communities and let us be the change that we wish to see in the world. And God, our prayer is that those 91 souls who were tortured and murdered and that young man who was killed in Ferguson to not let any of their lives have been lost in vain but let each one of them stand as a reminder to us to renew our commitment to continue to fight on their behalf because as we've heard and we've said many times before until all of us is free none of us is free until all of us can walk out the door and be who we were created to be without fear of persecution until all of us can walk out the door and not be ashamed of the color of our skin or our social economical status. None of us can walk out the door and feel those things, God. None of us can walk out the door and feel free of any of it until all of us can. God, as we continue in this service, we pray for the gathered community, for each of us here today. Allow our hearts to be opened and allow us to experience your love, your grace, and your mercy in a new way. Each of us is on a journey that you have placed us on, and each of us is in various stages of that journey, God, and we ask that you would meet us right where we are and help us to continue on that journey. This morning, whether we realized it or not, we have asked you to open up the floodgates of heaven. We have asked you to pour out your Holy Spirit and as we're gathered here today, allow us to be open to receive all that you are going to pour out of heaven and all of your Holy Spirit that you are going to pour out over us. We pray that those words were not meaningless and empty, but songs of prayer and a request to you, God. And as we are gathered today, we pray as a gathered community for all those who are not here today and those who are yet to come. As we also sang, somebody prayed for us, God, and that's the reason we're here today. St. John's MCC is here today because somebody prayed for us. Each one of us gathered here today is here because somebody prayed for us. So many people have come to know your love, your grace, and your mercy because somebody took the time to pray. Somebody took the time to be obedient. 
Reverend Troy Perry wouldn't be where he was at and wouldn't have created the denomination you called him to create if somebody hadn't taken the time and prayed. So allow us, God, to take the time and pray. Allow us to pray for all those who have yet to come to this community or to other communities of faith. Let us pray for everyone who does not know your love and allow us to be for you the willing vessels that you created us to be. In Christ's name, amen. Psalm 100, Psalm 100, and I'll be reading it from Eugene Peterson's The Message, Psalm 100. On your feet now, applaud God, bring a gift of laughter, sing yourselves into God's presence, know this. God is God, and God, God. God made us. We didn't make God. We're God's people, God's well-tended sheep. Enter with the password, thank you. Make yourselves at home, talking, praise, thank God, worship God. For God is sheer beauty, all generous in love, loyal always. And ever. It is sacred words. Find fertile soil in all of our souls. I'd like us to marinate on the subject living life on purpose. Living life on purpose. And the subtitle for this morning is simply this reasons for thanks giving reasons for thanks giving so in these moments of god we pause we pause to come further into your presence because we know that once we are there and once we are still and once we open up ourselves most fully to you, then in that moment, we are prepared to be your students. So teach us. Teach us the spiritual truths that are hidden within and underneath the sacred text. And invite us, God, to pull those spiritual nuggets that you are giving specifically to us 
that they might become foundations upon which we stand, blossom, and grow. Whisper into our spirits. Whisper into our ears. And find us just sensitive enough to be able to distinguish the difference between your voice and the voice of the world. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This Sunday in most high liturgical settings is acknowledged as Christ the King or Reign of Christ Sunday. It is that Sunday when we conclude the end of yet another liturgical year and prepare beginning with the first Sunday of Advent, which is next Sunday, for another lectionary cycle. Now, for the record, the lectionary cycle happens every three years, A, B, and C. Today, we're including year A, and next week we'll begin cycle B. Now, while this may sound somewhat like complex and strange ecclesiastical church jargon to some of us, the reality is that Christ the King Sunday is that time for the church to celebrate and to give thanks to God for what God has done, for what God is doing, and for what God wants to and desires to continue to do in and through God's people through yet another liturgical season. The truth of the matter is, while our living calendars may look very different, the liturgical calendar is built in such a way that we are instructed week after week after week to grow deeper and deeper and deeper in our relationship with God. So at the week 52, which is where we're at, believe it or not, that we would literally have a bastion of gratitude, a whole pool, if you will, of thanks and giving for saying, God, look what you have done this year. Look what you have done this year year. Look what you've done in my life. Look what you've done in the lives of others. And look what you've done amongst your people. I would submit to us that if we're going to engage this, this whole journey of these, these P's that I talked about last week, the first one being this thing about purpose, that we have to learn what it looks like and understand the power of living life on purpose and not just our purpose, but God's purpose for our lives. And this may sound somewhat unorthodox to some, it may not to others, it may sound somewhat strange to some, but not to others. But might I suggest to us that as people of faith, as followers of Christ, if we're going to truly live life on purpose, that that beginning begins with a posture of gratitude and thanksgiving. It begins with a posture of worship. It begins with a posture of engaging God more than just on Sunday. It is about engaging God seven days a week in every way imaginable or possible. It is an opportunity for us to say, God, thank you. Thank you for reminding me that I'm not you. You ever had one of those moments where you say, I'm so glad I ain't God. And then those times when I say that, God says, I'm glad you're not either. <laughs> and in that moment, I can say thank you again because what? Our ways are not God's ways. We forget that God is gracious, slow to anger, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. If we just sit with that for a few minutes, I think we got a lot we need to sit with just with that. Slow. Slow to anger. So this whole thing about living life on purpose, I believe, begins with a posture of thanks as well as a posture of worship. Worship. Worship that goes beyond this space. 
I do know uh, some of our folk who, who do this religiously, and, and which is a wonderful thing. It is incumbent upon us to set aside a way, a place, a practice that invites us to engage with God consistently. Is that making sense? Scripture says, up on your feet now, applaud God. That's what Eugene Peterson says. Worship God. Worship God through singing. Worship God by simple meditation. Worship God by just listening to God. Worship God by making a joyful noise. It didn't even say you had to do it in unison. Had to do it in harmony. You didn't have to do any of those things. Just make a joyful noise. And when we begin there, when we start there, we understand that in that moment, our purpose becomes clear. That everything that we do from the very moment that we wake up, I am not a morning person. (laughs) Peanut galleries. I am not a morning person, but one of the things I have learned over the last several weeks is that God wakes me up. And every time God wakes me up, it is normally against my will. But from the moment I open my eyes, the first thing that comes across my lips is, thank you, God. Because somebody did not wake up today. Thank you, God, because somebody is not going to be able to come and worship you today. Thank you, God, because somebody is in a hospital room or in a nursing home somewhere wanting to engage you and people just walking by ignoring them. Thank you, God, that even when I wake up in the dark outside, the promises, the light will come. From the moment we are awakened, we are invited to praise God. It is about understanding that that posture of worship establishes all of the purposes that are before us that God wants us to achieve. It is about understanding that every day is Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving ain't just about turkey and dressing. I don't like turkey. I'll eat it. Don't get me wrong. But it's so much more than that. If you think about what happens on Thanksgiving Day, for the folk who are cooking, they're complaining. It's hot. They got to get this turkey done. I won't tell you about the horror, but my sister, the first time my sister tried to cook a turkey when she left in the turkey. All I'm going to say, they were still frozen when the turkey came out of the oven. That's all I can tell you. (laughs) Doing the work that's just trying to make sure everybody gets fed, everybody's having a good time. The reality is we missed the whole point of Thanksgiving. We missed the whole point. It's about being grateful for family. It's about being grateful for friends. It's about being grateful to say, you know what? I made it through another year. (laughs) When I look at this list of 91 folk, I can't help but be grateful to God because my name could be there. Can I just be real? My name could be there. And because it isn't there, I even have more so reason not only to worship God, but to encourage you to do the same because your name could be there. And when you recognize that and you recognize the only reason that we're here is because God is God and we are not. That should give us reason to sing. That should give us reason to shout. And trust me, not everybody going to shout the same way. It's all right. Some people going to shout. Some people going to do backflips. Some people going to run for use. Some people going to rest. And some people just going to sit and just soak it in. Here's the piece. Get it while the getting is good. Don't let it pass you by. That posture of thanksgiving reminds us that God is sovereign. God is creator. God is with us in all places, in all time, and in all circumstances. From Alabama to Afghanistan, from Buffalo to Baghdad, from Fayetteville to Ferguson, God is God. And all of us, even in the worst of circumstances, hear me, even the worst of circumstances, we can find a reason to say, you know what? God, thank you for just being present with me. Because even when I think I'm by myself, you breathe. 
you breathe. And I'm, I do have a purpose. And you got the plan. We have a reason to give thanks because God is God. God is creator. God is sovereign. And God is ultimately over all things. Secondly, I believe that we can live life on purpose and engage this posture of thanksgiving by reminding us that God created us and breathed life into us. And because of that, each and every one of us are created in the image of God. And when we do harm to one another, Let that sit. When we do harm to one another, that goes to the heart, the essence of that spiritual place that resides within us. Remember, some says God is slow to anger. Doesn't mean that God's heart doesn't get hurt doesn't mean that God's heart doesn't get disappointed. But you know what the greater news is? Because God created us, because God continues to breathe life into us, God continuously invites us over and over and over again to come on back. Come on back. Because when you discover that even my anger might not last for a millisecond, once you start worshiping and praising and engaging me in deeper and richer ways, not only are you enriched, but I am enriched even more so. What does the word say when, when praises go up? Some of us are arid in our blessings because we ain't praising God enough. I'm going to let that sit. Get paid this week. Check short. Thank God. You got to check. You get to Thanksgiving Day, you don't have everything that you need. You got breath. You got health. You got life. To live life on purpose is about recognizing that our lives are to be a, a praise offering to God. Listen to what the psalmist says. I'm going to read it from the NRSV. Know that the Lord is God. It is God that made us, and we are God's. We don't belong to each other. We are God's people. We are the sheep of God's pasture. Now, hear the psalmist again. The, the, the psalmist says, enter God's gates with... Uh-huh. Uh-huh, yeah. And also says, enter God's courts with, be thankful unto God and bless God's name. Yes? Uh-huh, I'm still looking for the joy. I got this you know, over the last couple of weeks, sitting right here in worship. There's a power in pure worship. Can, can you go with me? Just there's a, there's a power when you just allow yourself to be open, to be ushered into the presence of God. There's a power in just letting go and letting God. There's a power in just saying, thank you, God, in the purest way you know possible. And in that moment, you know God. God breathes on you. And that's God's gift to us to be reminded that we belong to God and regardless of what the world says, we still belong to God. Nanny, nanny, boo-boo. <laughs> That's why we can have this posture of thanksgiving. That is why we can continuously engage God in worship because we are God's. The third piece is we can worship God 24 hours a day, seven days a week is where we are. God is. Y'all heard me say this before. You're in the bathroom, God's in there. You're in the bedroom, <clears throat> God's in there. So I just went, ooh. <laughs> At work, God's there. When you're driving, God's there. I can say that because God got me good a couple of days ago. I was on my way to the church. I was on my way over here. And I'm minding my own business. 
driving up Linwood and ended up behind this car that was taking a leisurely stroll <laughs> down Glenwood. And, and so after being behind this car for a good leisurely three minutes, I decided, you know, I think I just, I just need to go on about my business. And so I got in the left lane, proceeded to pass the car. I wasn't speeding. Proceeded to pass the car, got back into the right lane, mosey on my way to get behind yet another So in that moment, this is what I heard. Why don't I just spend some time with me? You're in a hurry to go deal with some stuff, and you ain't got all the equipment that you need to go deal with the stuff you're getting ready to go deal with. So why not spend some time with me? Enter God's courts with praise. So when, even when the stuff is waiting for you when you get there, you can say, thank you, God. Because I know you're going to work this out. Because if I do, it ain't going to look good. And God, and God works it out in our favor. Every time. I can't tell you the stories I've heard this week where God has showed up in people's lives in ways that they couldn't believe it. God shows up in the most unsuspecting places. Trust me. God will surprise you. And God surprises us to remind us that we're not alone. And if we understand, as we have affirmed, that the best is yet to come, we've got to understand that this living life on purpose is critical, and the foundation of that purpose is worship. It has to be worship. It has to be prayer. It has to be engaging God in deeper and on richer levels. This is the other piece I think it's important for us to understand. If we're going to live life on purpose, if we're going to engage this posture of thanks and giving, we must understand the importance of being in community together. We must understand the importance of being in community together. The invitation that David puts out there is not just an invitation. He wasn't just talking to himself. He was talking to a people. And this notion that where two or three are gathered, Jesus meant what Jesus said. Then I'm already there. And so a part of living life on purpose is to understand that we are called to engage this journey together. With praise, with thanksgiving, in an attitude of gratitude, and not just something we stumble into, but a place in which we live. It is our life. It is God's invitation to us every day of the week, no matter where we are, no matter what our circumstances, no matter who is around, we must live life on purpose. In Budapest, a gentleman goes to the rabbi's story is told, he, he follows some complaint. He says to the rabbi, you know what, life is just unbearable. There are nine of us living in one room. What can I do? The rabbi looked at the man and said, take your goat into the room with you. The man is incredulous, and, and, and he was, the, the rabbi insisted, take the goat with you into your room. One week later, this man came back looking much more distraught than he did a week previous. I can't stand this, he tells the rabbi. The goat is filthy. And then the rabbi looks at the man and says, go home and let the goat go. And then come back in a week. A week later, the man comes back all smiles, happy, joyful. He says, you know what, rabbi, life is beautiful. We enjoy every minute of it now that there's no goat, only the nine of us. You know, sometimes even in communities, you know, we, we may have we may have to have some rubs. You know? But even in those rubs when there might be a little friction, if we just hold on. <laughs> the good news is the friction will produce fire. The fire produces power. The power turns into a purpose. And the purpose ends up being the manifestation of God, manifestation of God in the midst of God's. 
What are you thankful for this season? In what ways are you planning to show your gratitude over the next several days? I've been watching a lot on Facebook, people doing these um, 90 day gratitude things and saying what they're grateful for, which I think is a wonderful thing. I would submit we can go a step further. That it not just be about 90 days, but it be about every day. That every day we say to God, thank you, that I still have my aunt with me. Thank you that I still have both legs and no one hip is killing me. Thank you that I have a community of faith that loves me sometimes in spite of me. <laughs> Thank you, God, for reminding me it's okay to crawl before you walk. It's okay to walk before you run. Just know when you start running, put your arms out so you can start to find what are you grateful for. David says, worship God. I've learned something in two weeks. That's what I plan to do. I don't know about you. But when my song is over, I want to make sure I have sung until I'm hoarse. Sing to the Lord a new song is what it says. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Will you sing this Thanksgiving? My prayer is that you will. That you'll find out what your song is and you'll sing it to your heart's content and that you will make it your act of worship every day to live life on purpose and to thank God for the opportunity to do so. Amen. One of the realities <clears throat> about this time of year that the holidays do different things to different people. And for people of faith, it's a great opportunity for us to do some self-evaluation, to really ask some questions of self, and in some cases to say to God, you know what, I really haven't said thank you enough. Maybe there's some blocks there. And we don't have to know what those blocks are. God already knows. But if there's been something there, some, some veil there that has kept you from fully recognizing or embracing this depth of love that God has for you, let us be the first to tell you, God is so patient. And the love that God has for you is only for you. And God will continue to hold it out to you, waiting for you to come and embrace it. And there are many ways that that can happen. And one of the ways that we experience that in the Christian tradition is through the waters of baptism. There may be others who have particular burdens weighing upon him or her, burdens of the heart, mind, soul, spirit. That is the case. We offer to and for you all for anointing that God might meet you at your greatest point of need. Would you listen? Can you hear the voice of the Spirit speak? And if that whisper invites you to come and worship God in this moment, listen to the voice. Listen to the voice and follow. Good afternoon. See a lot of new faces around here, so I guess I should introduce myself today. My name is Fred Kennedy. I am the co-director of our service ministry, which focuses on social justice issues such as hunger, poverty, any time, any human rights issue that the church needs to be involved in. Uh, this is a reminder that 
Next Sunday is the fifth Sunday of the month, and every fifth Sunday we take up a second offering to benefit our Faith in Action campaign that we do every year, even though the seasons may change that we do it, but we're going to do it again next year. And so we'll be taking a second offering next week to benefit that campaign. You're probably wondering why there was a bus up on the screen. Name it and claim it. So about five, six years ago, I sat in a meeting with 10, 12 other people. And during this meeting, we came up with five different ministries here at St. John's. Outreach, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and service. And during that meeting, Charles Leake and I were assigned to the service ministry. And so Charles stayed with me for about a year or so, and then I became the co-director, the lone co-director. But it's been good. And also during that meeting, someone made the comment, and I think she's probably on the drums right now, that <laughs> I think it was her, either her counterpart at the time, made the comment that are you in the right seat on the bus? And that has stuck with me. And today is a, a bittersweet day for me because I am a form, formally making an announcement that I've told Pastor about already. I want to make this announcement known to you all ahead of time as well. That I have decided that my seat on the bus is no longer in the driver's seat. My seat on the bus now it's in the back because sometimes it's easy to get a lot more done from the back seat than the front seat. So as of January 1st, I will no longer be in the driver's seat for the service ministry. And so I'm looking for two people, two committed people to take the lead. One thing you notice about this bus also is there is a second door up front for a co-pilot. Most buses only have one seat up front for the driver. This bus has two seats up front. No ministry in this church should ever be a lone ministry with one person driving the bus. So I'm giving you all almost two months notice that this bus needs a driver and a co-pilot. I'm still willing to sit in the back and guide as I need to, but I refuse to be in the driver's seat again because as long as I'm in the driver's seat, I'm holding a spot for somebody else who needs to be in that seat. There are too many people in this church for this bus to be empty. Not only do we need drivers, but we need passengers too to help. So I'm telling you all now, I'm giving you a heads up. I need some people to help. Vivian is in the kitchen now, I think, cooking for Lunchbox 11 this afternoon. She needs help. That's one seat on the bus. There's AIDS Walk and Ride. That's another seat in the bus. There are too many issues in this community for that bus to be empty. This is only one bus in this church of many. Look in your bulletin. There are plenty of opportunities to get involved. I was looking a few minutes ago. David and I are the only two on this bus that are still in our original seats because things have changed over time. That's good. No one should ever be stuck in the same seat when you got a church that's always growing over and over again. So I'm asking you all now, if you want to get involved, see me next week. Not this week. Take some time to pray about it. So come see me next Sunday if you're interested in getting involved. I'll be more than happy to sit with you in the back until you're ready to sit up front. Hey, that's what I'm here for. But just a reminder that we'll be taking a second offering next Sunday. This morning we'll be taking our regular tithes and offerings. That don't forget to put in your blue welcome cards and to see Pastor Carlton if it is your first Sunday here with us. He has a special gift for you after Sunday after service. Thank you.
loving, protecting God, we thank you so very much for this day that you have given us, a new day full of new opportunities. And we thank you, dear God, for blessing us with time, talent, and treasure so that we may give that back to you so it will be a blessing to those who receive. We thank you, dear God, for all the blessings that you give us. In the name of your Son, the Christ, amen. My brothers and sisters, I want to remind you that in metropolitan community churches, we affirm, celebrate, and offer an open communion. For we know and believe the Spirit of God moves in and through all, through all time, in every age, in every corner of the earth, calling all people to renew their hope and peace. So on this day, we invite you to come just as you are to share in this sacred meal at God's table and to experience the presence of the Christ. This table is open to all and invites all. This table is prepared for you. God is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give God thanks and praise. These elements of the earth made by human hands become blessed and holy by the power of God's spirit. And in them we find the source of life and strength for our spiritual journey. <clears throat> On the night that he was to be handed over, to suffering and death. Jesus, doing a meal in the upper room, took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, O oh God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, and he said to them, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the meal, he took the cup and of the fruit of the vine. And when he had given thanks to you, O God, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of the new and everlasting covenant sealed in my blood, which is shed for you and for the world for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Please join me in the responsive mystery of our faith. As we prepare to participate in the sharing of bread and the cup. We celebrate once again the gift of life we have been given and experience together the wonder of God's love as we prepare again the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ is here, Christ will come again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. You are invited, as the ushers direct, to receive the gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine by simple intention. By, uh, we're. <clears throat> These are the gifts of God for the people of God. You are invited as the ushers direct and to receive the gifts of bread and fruit of the vine from one of the communion servers 
followed by a prayer of blessing. If you are, if you would like to receive communion without a prayer of blessing, you may do so at the station to my right, and you, or you may cross your arms, which to the server that you may um, go to. We request that you observe the sacredness of this time as others receive the Holy Eucharist through song, prayer, and meditation. Let us all come together now and let us celebrate the feast. of grace, we give you thanks once more for this holy mystery you have provided for us through the fruit of the vine and the wheat of the field. Thank you for renewing us at your table by the presence of the Christ. Thank you for the bread of life that sustains all creation. As we prepare to leave this place, may your love continue to surround us and inspire us to live more fully for you, that we might rejoice as your servants and to the world. This we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. And invite us to rise as we are able. On behalf of all of us here at St. John, certainly want to wish each and every one of you a very, very, very happy Thanksgiving. This is one of the busiest travel holidays of the year. So if you are traveling, please travel safe and know that we send prayers before you and behind you. Also know that as people gather, wherever folks gather on Thursday, 
inevitably there will be people who will not be around a table somewhere. Let us remember our homeless brothers and sisters. Let us remember those who have no family. Let us remember those for whom the holidays are difficult and at times challenging. And so if you know of individuals who are single, who are alone, who have a tendency to have difficulty with the holidays, take a minute, give them a call, send them a text message, send them an email, let them know that you're thinking about them, that you care, and that you love them. You may be that Thanksgiving gift they need that day. Know that there's a world out there that awaits the ministry that lives within you and the witness that lives within you. The intentional seeking to go out in a posture of praise and worship, planting seeds of hope and peace and love and joy. Be intentional about giving the best of the God in you to someone else who's trying to find the depth of the God in them. And know that as you do that passionately and without reservation, know that the blessings that await you are just rich and abundant. And God has them just for you. So until we meet again in this space, as we prepare for the birth of the Christ child in you in our midst, I allow these words to speak to you and through you and strengthen you along the way. I am, I am God's beloved, God's beloved, deeply loved, deeply richly loved, gifted, richly highly gifted, favored, highly abundantly gifted, blessed. Abundantly blessed. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are, you are God's beloved, God's deeply blessed, loved, deeply richly loved, gifted, richly highly gifted, favored, highly abundantly gifted, blessed. We are. God's beloved. Deeply loved. Richly gifted. Highly favored. Abundantly blessed. Embrace the promise and go in peace as we sing together. Highway to heaven. Well, it's a highway to heaven. None can walk up there. Yeah.